Hi guys, looky what I got. I actually got this box last week or even the week before, but I inconveniently became septic and couldn't film the unboxing video. So it is first thing in the morning. I just woke up not long ago and I'm going to unbox this probably genetic kit. Probably Genetic is a genetic company that I've had the opportunity to work with and their goal is to help undiagnosed chronic illness patients determine whether or not there is a genetic cause for their symptoms. And they do it in a manner that is more affordable than if you were to go outright and pay for whole exome sequencing yourself and it does not require your physician to order it. It goes through their physicians and they will determine whether the testing is appropriate for you or not. So the accessibility of this company is great, but I'm going to unbox this and take my sample for whole exome sequencing. When you open the box, it says saliva collection guide. Follow the instructions carefully in order for a sufficient amount of oral cells to be collected. This is not a sputum test. Do not brush your teeth, smoke, eat, or drink any beverages at least 30 minutes prior to saliva collection. Remove lip makeup and rinse out your mouth with water before saliva collection. You can stimulate the salivary glands to collect saliva. Make a fist and roll them over your cheeks in a circular motion 20 times. Using the tip of your tongue, scrape the inside of your mouth and collect saliva. Place a saliva collection tube with a funnel near your mouth and spit out the saliva up to the red line. Exclude your bubbles. Add the preservation solution, close the lid and mix. I'm gonna start by stimulating my salivary glands I don't even know if I'm doing this right. I probably look like a big dork. This is a little different than 23andMe. 23andMe, while it does give you a lot of information regarding your background, there are certain meds you metabolize. This right here actually will detect genetic mutations leading to disease, not just what you're susceptible to. When you open it, you receive a biohazard bag. That is where you're gonna put your sample. That is a test tube and the preservation solution. And they give you directions and you ship it off in that box without having to pay for postage. This is the test tube, it's very tiny and we have to fill it up to that line. So. Oh goodness. That was very foamy. Ever since I've had liver problems, my saliva has been very thick. It looked like you had rabies or something. That's wonderful. Okay. I'm gonna have to stimulate my saliva glands again. <laughs> That's the directions it said. <laughs> <laughs> my cameraman is um, laughing at me. It like one of those gerbils or hamsters, like when they clean themselves really like that, you know what I'm talking about? When they're like trying to move the, mo the food that they store in their little cheeks. Mm -hmm. Don't do it that close. Don't you do it. That's wonderful. Seriously, don't buy this of it. Like, it's just frothy. People that have liver issues generally have that. I'm not sure why. It's making me salivate just looking at you. <laughs> but see, like, it can't be bubbles, it said. So it has to be the clear sputum up to that red line. And Are you not what? allowed to, like, squish water or anything? It says you can, but then you have to wait 30 minutes. The next step is to remove this funnel that we spit in. Take out the preservation solution and add the entire solution into the collection tube. This is the preservation solution. I'm going to add the entire doodad in there. 
I have to close the top with this white lid. I'm gonna make sure it's closed so I don't spill it and then mix for 15 seconds. And before you send your kit, you have to register it online. How do you register it? You go online to probablygenetic.com, log into your account, and your online account, enter the barcode number that is on the side of this box. Make sure to enter the barcode next to the name of the person that is using the kit. Your sample cannot be processed without registration. I understand you had done some genetic testing. You had actually done whole exome sequencing, diagnostic whole exome sequencing yes. prior to the probably genetic testing. Is that right? Yes. Correct. Okay. So this KCNQ1 variant was probably nothing new for you. No, at first it was a surprise, but now that we're aware from the whole exome sequencing, it was not this time. But Yeah. So it was a surprise the first time you did whole exome sequencing. Correct. Yes. But then this time, of course, doing the same test, not surprised to see that they found that same variant. Yeah. And um, when you did the whole exome sequencing back in 2017, 2018, a few years ago, was it for your doctors to, I think you had mentioned you went and saw metabolic geneticists? Yes, they were thinking mitochondrial disease. Mm -hmm. And so they sent me to the metabolic geneticist and she ran all of the mito testing and then did the whole exome sequencing. And okay. I was negative for mito, but. Okay. They did find a few things. Yeah, and when they did the mitochondrial testing, um, there are a couple of ways they can do that by both looking at nuclear DNA and mitochondrial DNA. And the reason I was asking about which geneticists or which genetic healthcare providers you've seen is, um, of course, with the whole exome sequencing, that's one of the, the most comprehensive tests available. Um, the only question I would have is whether or not a clinical geneticist would find any benefit in doing what's called a chromosomal microarray. The difference between a chromosomal microarray and a whole exome sequencing test is when, we, when you interrogate the DNA and when you look at the DNA to see if there are any variants within the DNA that could contribute or explain a phenotype or a disease, there are several different ways that they can actually analyze the DNA. So you may be familiar that our DNA is made up of billions of letters, the A's, T's, G's, and C's that go over and over and over again. Um, and uh, what a whole exome sequence does is it looks to see are all the A's, T, the individual A, T, G's, and C's all in the right place? Are there the right number of them? Are any swapped? Are there any missing letters? So it's doing a sequencing test that can only interrogate the DNA in, in, in a way that identifies sequence variants. A chromosomal microarray actually looks for large missing or extra pieces of genetic information within your genome. So of all the DNA you inherited from mom and dad at conception, it looks to see if any huge chunks of DNA are missing, which a whole exome sequence would usually miss because the technology that's used isn't able to recognize when there's missing genetic information. Yeah. And do you have any personal history of fainting spells yes. or syncope? Yes. Yeah. Now, do you have any family history of long QT syndrome in either a parent or mm. any family history of sudden cardiac death or arrest or fainting? Nope, just me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so if we can use the genetic test to identify who else in the family shares this KCNQ1 variant, then we can better figure out who has the long QT syndrome or who is at risk for the long QT syndrome and then get them plugged in with the cardiologist as well. So the probably genetic whole exome sequence only reported and only identified as far as we know that KCNQ1 variant, the same one that was identified on the prior test. But with the probably genetic, they only report out what are called pathogenic mm -hmm. and likely pathogenic variants. And you'll receive from me a note summarizing everything we've talked about today with more, more detailed information about the long QT, how to share this information. Um, so you'll get all of that and it'll have our contact information. So of course we don't work for probably genetic, but we're, we partner with them to provide the consultations to folks who've had the genetic test. All in all, my experience with probably genetic was very positive. 
the company and everybody affiliated with it is helpful. They are willing to go above and beyond to answer any questions that you have. And I think that what they're trying to do to make genetic testing accessible to everybody is wonderful. The cost is out of some patient's means, but if you compare it to trying to obtain whole exome sequencing ordered by your regular physician rather than their physicians, it would cost exceedingly more if insurance is not willing to cover it. The genetic counselors that they're contracted with are also very helpful. I was able to record a little bit of that visit. I don't want to divulge too much because that is personal information, but I tried to share as much as I can. I do feel that probably genetic is worth it, especially if you are still looking for the cause of your chronic illness symptoms. The only downfall coming from someone who has had whole exome sequencing ordered by my regular team of physicians is that probably genetic does not report variants of uncertain significance. Variants of uncertain significance are mutations in your genes that science has not caught up yet. They do not know if it's truly disease causing or not because there's not enough current information available. So when I had whole exome sequencing originally, it had picked up, of course, on my pathogenic mutation, the KCNQ1, which is what was discussed earlier in the video. It's a genetic cardiac condition. And it also picked up on a, or two mutations in the gene TTC7A. Both of them are heterozygous. TTC7A mutations are very rare. Not much is known about them. But if you talk to the researchers who are currently studying those mutations, I have compound heterozygous mutations and my variants are disease causing. But because not there's not a lot of information available other than what the one researcher in the world does, it was not reported to me on my report when I went over it with the genetic counselor when I had the exome sequencing with Probably Genetic. Now it doesn't mean that Probably Genetic does not see those mutations, it is just that they don't pass that along to the genetic counselors to reveal to the patient, but I believe that is about to change. Overall, it was a wonderful experience. Other, aside from looking like a dork trying to massage my salivary glands, <laughs> super easy process. Everybody's helpful. To receive a kit yourself from Probably Genetic, you can pay $29, I believe, to talk to one of their physicians and you fill out a symptom survey and then they will decide whether going the route of whole exome sequencing would be beneficial to your particular case. They have a list of frequently asked questions to find causes for, for chronic pain conditions like fibromyalgia. They mention autism, spectrum disorders, dysautonomia, and this whole XM sequencing can pinpoint genetic mutations that can cause these secondary conditions. So I think that it's worth it, especially if you have similar diagnoses as me, like gastroparesis and cell disorders and dysautonomia or POTS. That is my IV pump. I apologize, the battery dying. I cannot stress how important it is to find the underlying cause of those because if you can treat the underlying cause, then those conditions, secondary conditions, make it better. And probably genetic does a fabulous job at making the testing accessible to as many people as they can. If anybody has any questions, you can go to their website or you can ask me about the process. I can only tell you from my patient's perspective but they can answer more questions specifically about how whole exome sequencing works and the science behind it. Because I am not a scientist, I have a degree in psychology and that is it. <laughs> I'm not a geneticist. Thank you for watching and do not forget to subscribe. Bye!